crusade. Arnold and Paul Verhoeven's epic that was never made explained. Ever had your favorite dish cooked before you and then thrown away in front of your eyes? Somewhat of a similar feeling grasped the fans when the iconic movie crusade never got made after all the planning and investment. It could have been a movie to redefine the historical action genre, but eventually it just ended up as a shelved project. Guess who was at the helm of things? The legendary Arnold Schwarzenegger and the remarkable action movie director Paul Verhoeven was to be in charge of the proceedings. If the very idea of the two coming together doesn't make your heart beat faster, are you even an action movie fan? In the following video, we will tell you all that could have been. The detailed information about this unmade classic that could hit the box office as one of the highest grossing movies of the era. It is time to gear up for the immense disappointment of how we all missed out on a treat that was almost going to be served. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Dangerous, audacious, I don't know how it will go. I have never done this in this way, so let's do it. A brief history of Crusade. Let us get you started with the personalities who are at the helm of things. The script, for instance, was penned down by Oscar-winning scriptwriter Wallen Green, the man we know for the Wild Bunch. The director, Paul Verhoeven, needs no introduction. This veteran director was a maestro when it came to sci-fi action movies, and his work, like Starship Troopers and Robocop, speak for themselves. The acting cast involved the likes of Jennifer Connelly, Charlton Heston, and Gary Sinise, besides the star power resting with the protagonist to be played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. The thought of one of the finest action movie stars collaborating with a brilliant director yet again sent waves of excitement amongst the fans. It was like the unstoppable force had finally met with the immovable object. The idea was first floated by Paul Verhoeven during the filming of Total Recall in the 90s, another instance when the actor-director duo weaved their magic. He narrated the idea of Crusade to Arnie, who was intrigued by the concept of an action-packed movie that dealt with the historic crusade. It would have been a movie that dealt with religious fanaticism, violence, and the morbid history of humanity, where an entire civilization was out seeking the end of one another. What Crusade would have been like. The idea was to cultivate deep into the bloody chapter in history. The story that was supposed to be implemented was gripping to the core. Paul was not hesitant to court controversies for the movie because the story showed the Christian Crusade as an evil mission against the Arabs and the Jews. The plot narrated the ordeal of a thief turned slave who has to fight for the Christian Crusade as they aim for a takeover of Jerusalem. He soon finds out that the reasons behind the destructive and murderous war were beyond the religious difference. Crusade shows the Pope in a bad light, as he is shown to be a man who uses holy signs to instigate the religious fanatics into war. The protagonist is a theme named Hagen, who is sentenced to die. However, he burns a cross on his back to make it appear as a holy symbol. This allows him to be released from prison, and they send him to the Holy Land. The plot of the film would have explored the fact that the major target for the Christian Crusades was the Jews, whom they treated as the killers of Christ. One of the scenes in Crusade was supposed to be a classic duel between Hagen and Emich, the man who led an attack to slaughter a Jewish wedding as Hagen protected it. Although Hagen wins, Emich Rath sees him sold as a slave. The following scene would have been one of the most disturbing, gory moments in the film, as he would be sewn into a rotten dead donkey and hungry hyenas would have been let loose upon it. His genitals would be severed, and the wound would have been compressed with cow dung and tar. As he is about to meet with a eunuch's fate, his old prison mate, a Jew, saves him. Hagen also falls for the daughter of the local emir, the daughter that he plans to wed to a Muslim fundamentalist to bolster his forces. When the emir comes to know about the violent warmongering plans of the fundamentalist, he backs out on the wedding plans, but by then, his daughter has already been kidnapped. As Hagen rescues the princess, she is kidnapped yet again, this time by Image. She is saved by the approaching Muslims under a flag of truce. Hagen helps broker a temporary truce, but soon the things get complicated again. 
As political turmoil goes on, the fight for the Holy Cross becomes bloodier. Characters change sides, their true natures are revealed, and eventually, Hagen is disgusted with the real motives behind the wars which were all for narrow-mindedness and personal benefits. He gets his hands on the Holy Cross, and dejected at the murder in the name of the gods, he hands it over to some monks who promise to maintain its secrecy. There would have been no end to violence in this envisioned project. There was supposed to be a scene where Hagen cuts Emich into two halves. The lower half remains saddled onto a horse, while the upper half falls onto the ground. Although there would have been specks of romance and comedy, the movie would have largely been a dark, tragic, and violent story. Paul Verhoeven was determined on elaborating upon the sinister plan of the Pope, who led the religious fools to their deaths. What an exciting movie Crusade could have been. Very funny. Michael Douglas was telling me that the one time he got so mad that blood was coming out of his nose and stuff like that. I mean, so they're the funny stories. I mean, he gets so worked up. It happened. He had to go to the hospital. And everybody talked about that we had a fight and I hit him in the nose, which was not the case, which was not the case at all but it was an expression of just how, how passionate, how strong... First signs of the plans going awry. Often, the ambitions and passions of the director do not catch up with the reality of the producers. The movie Crusade was one such occasion where the producing company, Carol Co. Studio, was not too confident about keeping a stranglehold on the budget of this movie. They anticipated the suggested budget to be overshot in excess of 100 million US dollars a price that they were not sure of recovering at the box office. Verhoeven did nothing to assure them, and in fact, the arrogance of Paul Verhoeven was evident in the meeting as he refused to guarantee the budget remaining well within the initial idea. This greatly added to the dilemma of the studio. Eventually, they shifted to a cheaper project, Cutthroat Island. As luck would have it, this is the movie that played a huge role in bankrupting Carol Coe's studio. The budget for Cutthroat Island reached in excess of 100 million US dollars, and the returns were miserable to say the least. How they wished they had invested in Verhoeven's Crusade instead, but it was a little too late. While this was almost the end of the road for Crusade, rumors resurfaced at the end of the 90s that Arnie was trying to yet again get this project on the road. The plans hit a roadblock once again because Verhoeven continued to be adamant in his budgetary requirements, which he now said would be around 200 million US dollars. This was a price that no one was willing to pay, and there it was, one of the most interesting projects gone with the wind. Cost of abandoning the project. The ambitious project, as we discussed, was shelved by Kiroko Studios, but this was not before work on building the sets had started. The set for this movie was being built in Spain. As per estimations, the cost reached up to 10 million US dollars before the makers pulled the plug on this movie. This movie was an absolute loss because the set had to be broken off after their project was dismantled. Till today, Carol Co. Chiefs call this failed project a saving of 90 million by losing 10 million. But in reality, it was just about a plan gone wrong and costing them a fortune. A final word. So, is there a chance for you to experience this medieval epic sometime in your life? Well, we do not want to be pessimistic, but after all, the content is ripe for the taking even today. As the author David Hugh once mentioned, the project could take off now, but it would require a younger hero for the protagonist's role. He even suggested someone like Dwayne Johnson could recreate the role of the sword-wielding Hagen. Dwayne has already tasted success in similar movies such as Hercules, and someone of his stature would be the right person to take over the mantle from the iconic Arnie. Do not get your hopes up too high, because we have heard nothing to suggest that someone is trying to get this project up and running. We as fans can only hope that a skillful director takes up Crusade once again, and a wealthy studio does justice to the vision of this grand project. Till then, let us keep our fingers crossed and pray in silence. What do you think? Will we ever see Crusade in the theaters in our lifetime? Which action star would be perfect to play the lead character? And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.